and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. Today is Monday. It is May 2nd. The year is 2022 and this is a YouTube live streaming event. I am thrilled that you are here. Whether you're the visiting for the first time or you're coming back to watch more, I'm so excited that you're here because it's another big day here in the studio. Seems like I've been saying that a lot lately because there's been a lot of fun things going on. And tonight I'm gonna to teach you the easy way to make an angled trifold card. Now, in addition to the card I'm gonna be sharing with you tonight, I have numerous other samples for you, two of which have a slight alteration to it so that you can just make it the way you want it at home. I'm going to encourage you to make sure that you stick around and you download the free project sheet, which will be down below the video title when tonight's live stream is over. You're gonna find all the photos, the cutting dimensions, and the supplies for the projects I'm using. And just a little heads up, the projects that I'm using tonight, all the products containing in there are brand new, debuting in the brand new catalog tomorrow for 22, 23 annual catalog with Stampin' Up. So many amazing things. And if you're like me, your wish list is very, very lengthy. And tonight you're gonna to see why. I'm also going to give you a little drop, a little teaser here. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. I have a brand new revolving rewards program for my customers who choose to order with me. And I'll share a little bit about that for you tonight at the end of the live stream. Now, two other housekeeping items before we get started. First, we love to chat with you. If you are here in the live stream or you are watching the replay, in order to chat or comment, you'll need to log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address. So go ahead and do that. That is a requirement of YouTube, not of Lisa's Stamp Studio. And then finally, I wanna take a minute to introduce you to Gina Curcio Hawley. You'll see Gina's name here in blue off to the side in the live chat section. She is my daughter, but she's also the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio. And if you visit my channels before, you know that she is an avid stamper as well. Very, very versed to be able to answer your questions and provide links because when I'm stamping, there's no way to keep up with you. So Gina is here to interact with you. All right, I think we're ready. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin by doing some scoring and some cutting. And you're going to notice tonight, I've got a slightly different background. We are working with the camera with focusing and we want autofocus because you get a better clarity. I want to be able to hold things nice and close. So what I'm going to do tonight is I've given you a different background to hope make this a little clearer for you. Obviously, all your constructive feedback is always appreciated. So my stamp and trimmer always includes my scoring and my cutting blade. They navigate up and down out of the way. Absolutely love this trimmer. I think it is the best one on the market and I have used them all with friends. And I love that there's a ledge here at the top as well as the bottom to keep your cardstock nice and straight. And this clear cutting guide is a champ and you're gonna see why tonight that is a really, really big deal. So I'm gonna bring in some cardstock, and this is Knight of Navy. And we're gonna do a little bit of simple scoring first. So the very first score line is going to be at three and, a, um, three, and three eighths. Now I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna notice that this is probably a little bit wider. Bear with my camera, it's trying to catch up with my busy hands. This is a little wider than normal. This is five and a half by 11. Please remember that all your scoring and cutting, including a template, are going to be in that free project sheet. So that first score line is at three and three eighths. So I'm gonna move that right over to here. That's the last long line before the half. And that light blade is for scoring and we are going to score. Now this next one, I'm gonna slide over to seven and five eighths. So I'm gonna open up the extension arm on this trimmer, which I absolutely love. I'm just opening it up and seven and five eighths is the long line just past the seven and a half. And I just wanna make sure I don't get my head in your camera view and I've got the right measurement and then we are going to score. Okay, now, just for those of you that are a little bit more proficient in paper crafting, I wanna give you a little bit of a tip. You didn't have to go all the way to seven and five eighths. You could have simply done the first one at three and three eighths and then flipped the paper around and done another three and three eighths. And the reason is, is because this is gonna be symmetrical on both sides. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close this up and bring that arm back in, and we're gonna do some tick marks so that we can do some cutting. Now, the very first thing is I'm going to use my very favorite pencil for this. Now, my Bic Mechanical Pencil has a very soft lead, and the eraser on this is a champ. 
and I love it for crafting here in my studio. Now it's among numerous things here in my craft room favorites. You're going to be able to find that over on my website under the shop tab, craft room favorites. I just use the items there to help aid me with my paper crafting in the studio and I've linked them there for you as well. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to do a tick mark at one and one half inches. So just so that you're clear, we've taken the long way now and we've turned it the tall way. So at one and one half inches, I'm going to close that and guess what? My mechanical pencil is going to fit right inside here where the blade would normally travel. So I'm just going to make a little tick mark there with my pencil. I'm also going to make one down here all the way at the bottom, which is just slightly off your camera view on the other side. So we have one at the top and we have one at the bottom. Now I need one at the one inch on this side. And quite frankly, I love doing it on this side of the trimmer. There are measurements here so you could rotate the paper, but I just find it easier just to measure on this side. So I'm going to hold this and line this up at one inch. Again, using that ledge to my advantage, I'm going to close that track. And with my pencil, I'm going to make a mark there and a mark there. That's it. Now, here comes the next best part. We are going to connect the dots. And this is where the angle comes in. Now, I am going to switch to my little silver pencil. And I'm hoping that this is going to be easier for you to see. Now, naturally, you wouldn't do this at home. This will make it a little bit harder to erase. But I'm going to make a silver mark here where those marks were. And I'm going to make a silver mark here in the crease, just so that you can see it here in the live stream. And then I'm going to do another one here and here. Those are the crease marks. And then here and here. I am going to tell you that you can vary these cutting dimensions where these lines are to your advantage. So if you want them shallower or deeper, you can do that. Now I've got some great tips for you about the belly band in the designer series paper for the spun fold. All right, the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to connect, like I said, those dots. So I can manipulate this on my trimmer. Here's one of the things I love about this trimmer. You'll notice that the blade goes right inside this black line. So you're going to want to line up those tick marks inside that line. Now, because the guide is clear, I can manipulate the paper to make sure that it's going to fall there. So I'm looking here at the bottom and I'm looking here at the top. Now I know you probably got a little bit of a glare in the video from the lights, but then we're just going to slice and then we're going to discard this. Now, while we're on this side, we're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to connect the dots and these measurements are super simple. So I know that you can do this at home. Now, what usually tricks most people up is the next layer, but I've got some tips for you about that as well. So we're just lining that up. I'm trying to get this as even as possible. And now we're going to go ahead and do this side as well. It's the exact same thing. So I'm just closing up that door and I'm working through that clear track here so I can see where I'm at, making sure it's going to fall inside that black area. And we're going to cut. And then the same thing down here, I'm going to line this up and I'm just going to manipulate that paper so that I know it's going to fall on the track. And then we're going to cut. So this now has given you this. Now, naturally, you're not going to have the silver lines, okay? When That's going to be all changed when you're making your own card because you just use pencil lines. All right, let's go ahead and let's do the next thing. Actually, let's go ahead and let's fold this up first. Um, if I've got a pencil, I'm going to use my favorite pencil. Let's see if it'll take some of those silver lines off. I think it will. That'll make it a little bit less obtrusive for you when I finish it. Like I said, this is my favorite crafting pencil for a reason. The eraser on here doesn't leave any debris whatsoever, and it doesn't leave an indentation in your paper. It even worked in that silver pencil. All right, so let's go ahead and let's fold this up, and I'm going to use my bone folder first. So I'm going to fold that in and crease up on that score line and do the same here. Now, I also have to point out something to you. There is very clearly a top and a bottom. Oh, I'm, my autofocus is not liking me at all. I'm so sorry for that, you guys. All right, so let me move that trimmer out of the way. Sometimes it, that happens because of the glare. There is clearly a difference between the top and the bottom. And when you fold these, you're going to be able to tell. The bottom is shallower where their top is deeper. And that's going to be very, very important when it comes time to do the designer series paper. So let me push this off to the side for just a second. And let's talk about the designer series paper that I chose. And I chose this and it's from the brand new designer series paper package called Sun Prints, and it is stunning. Like all the designer series papers with Stampin' Up, they are double-sided, so you can choose what side that you'd like. I have to tell you, I'm gonna bring in some other paper because I want you to see this. This is absolutely stunning paper. 
Now this is all from the Sun Prince. This is the first one. Isn't this beautiful? And then here's the next. Look, oh, I think when you see them in person, you can really get a better appreciation of how beautiful these patterns are. Look at this one. For those of you that are scrapbookers, you're absolutely going to love that. And then of course there's this one. But they're double-sided, like I said. And here is where the magic of Stampin' Up's award-winning papers comes in. I absolutely love these patterns. And here's another one here, kind of buried there. And I love that they all coordinate and they work together. Now these papers are all available in the brand new annual catalog that debuts tomorrow. Now we're gonna do some designer series paper layers on top of this. Now oftentimes when you have a, an overlapping or a trifold like this, creating these layers can be very, very tricky. So I'm gonna give you a couple tips that I hope are gonna help you. First of all, if you're brand new at doing this type of fun fold, I'm going to recommend that you pick a pattern that has no direction. That's gonna make your life a lot easier. If it has a direction, then you're gonna be wanna be very, very cognizant where you put your tick marks and how you cut it so that it's facing the correct way. The first trick is this, put the right sides together. So these are actually gonna be my wrong sides tonight. I know, it's pretty on both sides, isn't it? Now here's where we're gonna do a little bit more measuring and I'm gonna bring that trimmer back in. So I've got my trimmer here and I'm just putting the papers together. Now, like we've done before, I'm gonna use my pencil and we're gonna use the exact same measurements. So we're gonna open this up. And again, you wanna make sure that these are good and together so that they're not shifting. And we're gonna do the first one at one and one half inches. Now, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not, but I'll go back over it with my little silver pencil. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this and we're gonna move this over to this side, just like we did before. So I'm just gravitating it now so that the one inch is here, just like we did with the cardstock. There's absolutely no difference. So I'm laying it up here at the edge. This was the one and a half. And at the one inch mark, making sure my papers are well aligned, I'm gonna make another mark. Okay, so I'm actually gonna do two at the same time. Now let me slide this out of the way. And I'm gonna bring in my little silver pencil here, hoping that you can kind of see me. So there's a mark there. And there's a mark there. And I think you might be able to pick those up on the camera inside the designer paper. We are going to cut them at the exact same time. Remember, the right sides are together going in the right direction. So back to the trimmer. We're going to navigate that scoring blade out of the way. And this time we're going to use the cutting blade. What you're going to do is you're looking to cut from that one and one half inch mark up to the corner because that's going to create the angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it inside of here and I'm gonna navigate it so my top corner is up here and then my tick mark is inside the track. And there's that tick mark. Again, I know it's silver, it's difficult to see. And then we are gonna slice. Now I have another cutting tip for you that some of you have told me has been a game changer for you. When we rotate on this side, again, I'm checking to make sure those papers are together. You're gonna to notice that this becomes narrower, which means there's less paper. And if you're like me and you wanna start cutting from here at this narrow tip, and you do not have a sharp blade, what happens? It gets stuck and it rips your paper, doesn't it? So let me teach you about anchoring your blade. So I'm gonna put my finger here, <clears throat> excuse me, underneath the clear cutting track. That's gonna allow me to navigate the blade without it touching the paper. I'm gonna bring it up to the center, making sure that I'm properly aligned, I am going to anchor the blade in the middle and I'm gonna slice up and then slice down. This way, it gives you some concrete area to put the blade so that you don't rip the ends of the designer series paper. All right, so I've got my paper cut now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up putting this together. Now I'm gonna put this off to the side for just a minute because we need some other pieces to manufacture this. All right, the very first thing I'm gonna do is a little bit of stamping. So I've got some scrap white cardstock here and I'm gonna be using the coordinating stamp set, actually the whole bundle. It's called Nature's Prints. It is beautiful, isn't it? And I love it especially because it can be used for both masculine and feminine cards. There are coordinating dies called Natural Prints that we're gonna be using as well. And I've got some other samples for you too, so you'll get to see some variations. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my gray granite ink pad. Now here's the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink is going to coordinate with our card stocks and our designer series paper, our alcohol-based stamp and blends markers, and all our ribbons and embellishments. It makes designing so, so easy. So we're gonna start with this color first, and I want one 
of these, what I'm just calling kind of a fern, I guess, kind of like almost like a wheat image. I'm gonna ink that up, just make sure I've got good coverage. And we're gonna stamp that here. Now, because there are separate dies for all these images, it's gonna allow me to be able to die cut the vast majority of them all at once, which is gonna make this really easy. So I'm gonna push that off to the side and I'm gonna bring in the Knight of Navy. Again, here's that color coordination you've gotta love. This time, I've cleaned that stamp just off camera and I'm gonna use it one more time. So obviously this is going to have to go through my stamp and cut and emboss machine more than once, but that's really okay. And then we're gonna do a little bit more stamping. Here now I've got one of the ferns, all from that same stamp set, and we're gonna stamp that here. Don't these stamp absolutely beautiful? And this last image is a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna grab another piece of scrap cardstock. Look at this, isn't this beautiful? The detail in the stamp is absolutely stunning. I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer because I have a feeling the autofocus might work a little bit better. And I'm gonna ink this up. And I'm gonna apologize for that. We do have a new camera on order that's gonna be able to keep up with us a little bit better. So please just bear with me tonight. The card is really amazing. And then we've got our image. Isn't that pretty? So, so pretty. Now I'm gonna clean that stamp off camera right now because I am gonna do one other thing. Now I've got another piece of paper here that's actually going to be for the inside of this card. But I wanna use that similar stamp to create a background. So I just wanna make sure it's good and dry. Here's my image, and I'm gonna go back to that gray granite ink. Now this is something that a lot of us don't think about when we're doing the inside of our cards, but you can actually create multiple tones from the exact same ink pad. I just wanna make sure that was dry. So I'm gonna ink this up, and I am going to stamp off the strongest layer of ink there. And then I'm going to put this right here in the center. That's gonna make it lighter, but give me an impression that I want that's gonna be housed behind my greeting. All right, so I'm gonna close this up. Let's go over here to the Knight of Navy. And for this one, I've actually chose a sentiment from a different stamp set. And this is called Inspired Thoughts. It's gonna be in the new catalog as well. Love it a lot. I seem to be using it quite a bit. And I've pulled that out and I'm gonna ink this up. Now, I want you to remember when you do the inside of this specific fun fold, it's going to be important that you stamp almost everything in the center and you'll see why when we're almost finished. All right, I'm gonna take that off camera and just clean that as well. I'm gonna go ahead and close this up because all of our stamping is finished. And what we're gonna do next is I'm, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna die cut this. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all of that right now, but I do wanna show you one of the things about this die set. Now, this is my Titan tray. It is magnetic, so all the little small dies don't get lost here in the studio especially when you get down to these little itty bitty ones here in the center. I don't know about you, but I go to take them to the stamp and cut and emboss machine and then I'm losing them and I'm like, oh no, where'd they go? So if I put them in here, it's magnetic. It helps me to keep them all in one place and wrangled. And this is also in my craft room favorites. Now you can see that this is gonna have to go through twice for this specific image. And if you're like me and you're often fighting, keeping these in place, I wanna talk to you about this. This is the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. This is the same roll that I bought, gosh, 18 months or so ago. And I love it because what you can do is you can rip this in half if it's too wide, and then you're gonna anchor this to the cardstock. So I'm just looking to center my die where I want it, and I can anchor it. Now Stampin' Up! has a brand new magnetic plate that's coming out that's supposed to work really well with this. Now, demonstrators could not even pre-order it, so we all get to order tomorrow, and I'm gonna give that a whirl. But for those of you that can't afford that product just yet or are looking for an immediate fix, this is also in my craft room of favorites. You will absolutely love that. And because there are separate dies for all the images, guess what you can do? You can line them all up and you can pass them through your die cutting machine at one time, lickety split, and that makes your life quick, fast, and easy. Now let's go over and let's talk about one more thing that I did. I took a piece of gray granite cardstock and I took the label die that also comes as part of that die set. And I die cut myself a label. And I love that there's a label inside of here because it's going to house these greetings beautifully. And we're actually gonna be using it in a very strategic way for the closure tonight. Now I did do that ahead of time and I also wanna to mention to you what else I did. I went ahead and I used my Versamark ink and I pulled out one of the greetings from the stamp set and it was this one here, best wishes and happy thoughts. Really, really thought this was pretty. 
I went ahead and I stamped it in Versamark ink. I'm not going to go through die cutting that and, and actually heat embossing it because I have a whole video here on YouTube called Heat Embossing 101 that'll teach you everything you need to know. But I did that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time in the video. And that is here. Heat embossing is a really fun and quick way to get a wow on your projects. And I absolutely love the way that it looks. You've got like a real 3D glossy professional finish. Now, because I did the die cutting ahead of time, I do have those images here. Now we're gonna to have to work on this piece next because this actually works as part of the closure for this card. Let's go ahead and push those off to the side and let's get the designer series paper on here next because that's gonna be important before we close up the card. Remember we mirrored these together. So you're gonna be able to actually just open these up. Now, I wanna teach you something. If you happen to put them on here like this, and they don't fit right, it's because one end is deeper than the other. Remember I mentioned that in the beginning? So you're gonna to wanna to put it on the other side. I'll tell you, when you're doing one and a half and one inches, sometimes that little bit of a half an inch, it can be very deceiving for your eye. Now let me give you a tip about adhering this. You're gonna be using your silicone craft sheet. I cannot live without this product, I absolutely love it. And we're gonna use liquid glue. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know this is a nemesis for me because I tend to use too much. The little stand keeps the tip of the bottle always upside down, which means it's going to be ready to use. And you'll find that in my craft room favorites as well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get this started here in my silicone craft sheet. Liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to this. So when this turns translucent and it dries, I can rub it straight off. So I'm going to turn this to what will be my wrong side, and you're not going to want to work too close to the edges. I'm literally dragging the tip of the bottle on the designer series paper because, as I told you, I tend to be very heavy-handed. So I'm going to grab my Take Your Pick tool because it's got a little putty tip there. That's going to help me lift that up. And this now is going to go what will be on the right side. Now here's where liquid glue comes into play. Important because you can kind of navigate it a little bit up and a little bit down none of us cuts perfectly. So you off a little bit smidgen, don't worry about it. You can just kind of manipulate that paper a little bit so it fits the very best that it can. And then this is going to be the left side. Again, I'm not working too close to those edges. I don't want it to ooze outside of the perimeter. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick that one up once again. I cannot live without this tool. It just really helps me. It's like my third hand. And then this is gonna go on this side. And you're going to see I'm just doing my best to leave a border all the way around. Once I'm happy with it, we're going to press that in place. That liquid glue is very, very strong and it dries quickly. That's a big advantage. All right, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to work on the closure. You'll recall that we had these pieces just a moment ago. We are going to take the greeting and we're going to flip this upside down. And with my Stampin' Seal Plus, we're going to add some adhesive all around the back edge of this pretty much near closer to the top. And we're gonna collage these together. So I'm gonna start with what's gonna be the furthest in the back side. So I'm looking here, and you may need to cut away some of this if it's too tall for you, you can just snip it from the bottom. So I'm looking here and I'm thinking, oh, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna attach this one here, and then I'm gonna take this one, and I can kind of work this one through here and behind here just to be a little bit more creative. So it's sticking to the adhesive here. And then if you find you need a little bit more adhesive here, just go ahead and add it to the back. I find building this whole center piece first before placing it on the card is so much easier than trying to add it all to the card at the same time. So I'm gonna add one here and let's go ahead and let's add our fern here. Actually, I think I might take, no, I think I'm gonna put it on the back side. I'll tuck it here. Now, if I need a little bit more adhesive, which I think I do, we're gonna add that there. All right, it's all in place, it's being held down Good enough, that's all we need. Now here comes the trick to the closure. It is gonna be a belly band. Now, there's something about belly bands you need to know. When you crease them, sometimes the edges crack, and I'm gonna give you a great tip. But before we do that, now is the easiest time to go ahead and put this on the inside of our card. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some adhesive in my corners. The Stampin' Seal Plus is very, very strong, so you don't need a whole lot. I'm going to center this, and this is why I recommended to you that you put the images and the greetings in the center because you want to make sure it's going to be hidden behind the closure, okay? Left over right, right over left, it doesn't matter. It's either way is totally fine. Now here's the tip about the belly band. Take your bone folder 
and you are very lightly going to condition this paper. So it's kind of like curling ribbon for a package. And I'm gently gonna do that on both sides. I find that by breaking down the fibers just a little bit, makes us a bit more pliable and it reduces the cracking as I go around the card. Now, typically people like to score and I am not a big fan of scoring and I'm gonna tell you why. Because you need a little give and if you're off just by a smidgen on your score lines, it's frustrating because it's either gonna to be too tight or it's gonna slide right off. So what I like to do is I like to center this just visually. I'm gonna lay it flat on my work surface. I'm gonna bring one end in. I am not making it too, too tight because I know the card's gonna expand a little bit. And then I'm just creasing. Same thing here now. Again, I'm looking. I don't want it to be too, too tight. And then I'm going to crease. And then you can go over this with your bone folder if you'd like. And what we're gonna need to do now is attach this. So what I'm gonna do is grab my adhesive and I'm gonna add a little bit here. Remember I told you the Stampin' Seal Plus is very strong. And then I'm lightly going to tack these two together. Again, being very careful that this is not too tight because this is, needs to slide, but you don't want it to fall off. This is where this comes in. What I wanna do now is I wanna anchor this here on the front of my card to create my closure. It makes a beautiful presentation and allows you to use the stamps all together with the dies. And of course, you know, we got pretty paper. Greetings would work just fine. But this is where your dimensionals are going to come into play and they're gonna work just famously with your design. They're also gonna play double duty. Now we know it's gonna get attached to the belly band around here. So I'm going to anchor down those pieces that I've adhered with the dimensionals as well, just to give this a bit more stability. If you are concerned that a piece is going to fall off, grab yourself a glue dot. Let's do a little bit of card surgery. I'm using that take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment. And I am going to just add this right behind here where it's not gonna show. And that's going to assure me that these pieces are not going to move. Sometimes it's easier to do it this way when you're all done because then you know exactly where to put them. So you can go ahead and add more dimensionals if you'd like, but I'm gonna go ahead and just balance those across here taking off those backings. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to center this on the front of my card so that the bottom half of this label kind of hangs off. But here comes the best part. We're gonna add a little bit of embellishments to this. And remember, I've got several other samples to share with you in a variation to this card. Now the pearls come in numerous sizes, which is fantastic. So you can use those to really spruce things up and draw some interest. So I'm gonna place one of them down here. I'm gonna take a smaller one, I'm gonna place it here. And I'm gonna take one more smaller one. That one wants to run away. They've got glue dots on the back, which makes it really easy for you. And that one's gonna go there. I'm gonna give that a really good push. And there we have our card. Isn't this stunning? So, so pretty. And again, really easy for them to use. It just slides right off and then opens up your card. There's a lot of things you can do with this belly band. So let me show you some other ideas that I have for you. Now this next one, I could not resist. If you were with me last week, you're gonna know that I'm very, very partial to a specific stamp set right now. This is the exact same designer series paper and dies, but I changed up the greeting on this. And if you're not familiar with it, let me just tell you about it. In the brand new Stampin' Up! annual catalog that debuts tomorrow on page 38, you will find the stamp set that I helped design for my million dollar sales achievement. And it's called Charming Sentiments. Now it's offered as a bundle. You are not gonna want one without the other because we've got coordinating dies for all the greetings. But in addition to that, we also have some other pieces down here. They're gonna work great. Pieces that you can use all year round. And if you missed it last week while we were alive, we went a little further and we told you that Jean and I worked together and we created a die template. Because when I got the stamp set from Stampin' Up, it was the first press one. I got to have the first one, which was so exciting. I looked at this and I thought, well, how am I going to know which greeting goes with one of these without messing with them? So I took photographs and Gina traced them and we came up with this great template. This is a free digital download for you. If you buy the Charming Sentiments bundle, you'll want this. Head over to lisastampstudio.com and under shop, you'll see digital downloads completely free. You can go ahead and print this off and we sized it so it can go perfectly inside your dies right between those little sheets and you can reference them. But let me show you how famously these work. So I actually stamped and heat embossed this on colored cardstock and this is where those dies come in. Now, if you're looking at that banner, wondering where I got that fantastic stitch banner, 
This is also a brand new product called Stylus Shapes. And you have stitched squares and layering sizes, circles and banners. It is a must have on your brand new catalog wish list. I'm absolutely loving this. My stamp set also works great for the inside of your card as well. And that's where it says faith over fear. These were greetings that were near and dear to my heart. And so I hope that you're gonna enjoy that bundle of products as much as I have. That beautiful die here in the background is actually here in the natural prints, which is all part of that bundle I used on this card. All I did was cut it in half and I just manipulated the pieces so that it was off angle. Now I have one more with this exact same fold and then I've got two other variations for you. This one uses a brand new stamp set called Cup of Tea. And I'm a big tea fan, so I fell in love with this and I used the Coordinating Designer Series paper called Tea Boutique. Very simple color palette, but isn't this fun? So I created a little slice in my lemon there and I added that to a really cute tea tag. And just like the others, this course, this comes off and you've got a simple greeting inside or you can do some more stamping. Remember, you want to put your stamping towards the center so that it won't show from the top or the bottom of this card. Now I say the bottom of this card because these next two are a variation. This next one uses product that's in the current mini catalog and it's called Cactus Cuties. Isn't this fun? So you can actually use a sponge dauber to add additional color to an inked image, which gives you a tune tone effect. And you're gonna notice, look, you see how the bottom is different than these? So I didn't angle the bottom. I only angled the top. So I used only the one and one half inch mark on this one. This one has a very simple greeting on the inside as well. You'll see these in your project sheet. And this one has a whole lot of brand new Tahitian Tide, which is an in color coming in. I made it and I thought, that's too much turquoise. And I thought, you know what? I still kind of like it. So are there any other Tahitian Tide or turquoise lovers out there, you're gonna love this. This uses the brand new in colors as well and some Calypso Coral. And this one uses a very large single stamp called Every Chapter. And I did use the alcohol base markers here and you'll see that I use some Wink of Stella on those glasses. I don't know if that shimmer is gonna pick up, but isn't that pretty? A simple greeting on the inside of this one as well. Nothing real fancy there, but you'll see the same similar embellishments. So really the ideas are endless on what you can put on the belly band closure here. And I'm hoping now that this fun fold is not gonna be as intimidating for you as it was perhaps when you originally saw this fun fold. I originally learned the idea from Jan B from the UK and I wanna thank her for that. But I gave it a little bit of tweak to make it on my own and I know you're gonna do the same. Now there's a couple things I teased about in the beginning. And the first is I wanna to talk to you about this. Here at Lisa's Stamp Studio, from May through July, we are kicking off this brand new catalog and style with a brand new ordering rewards called Revolving Rewards. Guess what? There's gonna be a new host code every two weeks and each of those host codes going to include a new product gift list. Now to qualify, you'll need to use the monthly host code, which is over on my website at the very tippy top above the banner. And you'll also need to make sure it's $50 in product or more before shipping and tax. You'll also get a private invitation to live with Lisa. And if you don't already have a demonstrator, I would love to reward you and earn your business. Now, the next thing I wanna chat with you about that's really exciting is this. If you love those brand new in colors and you're looking for a great deal, what if I told you $99 free shipping, only local sales tax applies, you can choose $125 in Stampin' Up! products of your choice, and they're going to throw in another $66.50 of in-color products. You'll get all five of those beautiful brand new in-colors, ink pads. You'll get the assorted designer series paper, the assorted cardstock, grid paper, a complimentary paper pumpkin kit, which is selected randomly. We don't know which one, of course, it is, but we would absolutely love to have you join my stamping team. You can get more information over on my website under join. If you would love a discount on your own paper crafting supplies, or perhaps maybe you'd like to share the opportunity with other people by stamping with them, either one is permissible. There is no catch. So head over there to get some additional information. While you're over on my website, over at lisastampstudio.com, make sure that you click on subscribe, which is all the way at the bottom. I'd love to include you in my monthly newsletter so that you can get a free PDF tutorial from me every Wednesday or every Thursday. I'm thinking, what day is it? On Thursday. I don't share it on any of my other platforms. And then do me a favor, 
mark your calendar for next Wednesday, which is May 11th. It's a different date next week because it's going to correspond with my monthly online card class. You are not going to want to miss this explosion card. It is incredible. And I'll have lots of other samples to share with you. Thank you all for being here with me tonight. And Gina, thank you so much for moderating. Happy new catalog day tomorrow, everyone. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye now.